My name is Eduardo Garcia. I'm a professional chef, avid hunter, fisherman, and wild foods forager. A few years ago, I nearly lost my life doing what I love. Since then, I've doubled down on my mission to make food an integral part of every adventure. This is my hungry life. wake up to this. I'm sure that they're tailing in there right now, as calm as it is. I actually met JT at a fishing conference over in Florida. We got jamming and talking, and, and it's clear right away we're cut from the same cloth. We have old souls that have definitely hung out and spent time together. You know, JT tells me, he says, hey man, I should go fly fish down to a special place called Laguna Madre. Wake up early and we I'm gonna fish for tailing redfish, and at night we're fishing for black drum and the speckled sea trout. And um, JT loves to attack you with a fly, and, and that's right up my alley. It's just in a place where it feels like it could have been a thousand years ago. You know, it's just that beautiful and that, that fast. And it's an effort getting there, kind of conditions have to line up. I'm thinking, I'm in, let's do this. But as we're cruising, it wasn't just offered to you. The fish weren't sitting there like goldfish in, you know, in a bowl. You would see a fish totally calm, totally unaware of our existence. And I would get ready to make my cast and my floating line would tap the varnished hull of the boat. It knew something was off and just start tailing away. Guiding, it's sort of a fallout career in a really good way. Most folks try to simulate into society, but if you're gonna be beating your head against the wall, then it makes a lot of sense to fall out into something that's at least gonna be meaningful to you along the way. Texas has just this unlimited ability to get away and feel free. It definitely makes me happy to have a, a history here and a lot of learning in this particular location where I can say, okay, I've spent a lot of time here understanding and knowing this place. And, I'm gonna provide you with safety and success. Make a good cast, dance it past their nose with the rod tip, and then and stay tight. Then you can poke them and just let go, let them run. Nice, strip, lift the rod, lift it, lift it. He got him, nice, let it go, let it go. He's on, baby. aspect of what Ed's doing really takes it to another level. There's a discipline there in not bringing down some greens that got shipped here from the valley or from California where you bring them in a plastic bag and that's your side. Like to, to finish fishing and be tired but take a hike in an extremely hostile environment with rattlesnakes and who knows what else that could bite, burn, or sting you, you know? I'm stomping over that stuff all the time. Maybe I'll, I'll try to stop and, and fill my apron with it next time. The second the sun went down and it was dark enough to turn on a light, we turned the dock lights on and the lights started tracking these shrimp. And those are the flies we're using throughout the day, we're using these little um, shrimp pattern flies. And the shrimp, of course, are food for bigger predators. And so then 
out of the darkness, you get schools upon schools. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of speckled sea trout. There's probably no better representation of a, a particular area than the food that you would have in that region. Look at that donkey. That's a queen oyster right there, man. You know, Antonio, the fisherman, he said uh, that sometimes they find pearls with these guys. I know a guy who gave his girlfriend one. Take him to the grill, huh? I've never grabbed a heavy ass bag of oysters like this before, <laughs> but it feels really good. Yeah, it does. So you think boiling these suckers? I steam them in beer. Steam them, and then we'll pull some of the meat out and maybe throw them in empanada? Yeah. JT, when you do heat, how high do you usually go? All the way. <laughs> and we, we had a whole sea trout laid out on the coals, just grilling coal. Let's squeeze half in here and grill the other half on top of that fish, right? I think when I was 21, that was the last time I, I made a menu before arriving to a location. You know, because you can pre-think about what you would like to eat, but the bottom line is, is that the best meal you're going to have is what's on offer. We had grilled the cactus paddles and we cut them up into pieces and filled them, put them inside empanadas or put them inside a, a fresh corn masa and folded those like turnovers. You know, an empanada in Mexico is a, a sort of a Mexican version of a turnover. <laughs> it's way hot. So good, it's just this side of intolerable. You know, one of the really choice, <laughs> choice, choice bites that we had that night was um, we took really beautifully thin sliced fillets of the speckled sea trout and we laid those inside a, a lemon leaf. So pretty, I love it. And then we closed, closed the lemon leaf. Kill doesn't entirely make sense to get into this little packages of trout grilled in a lemon leaf. And one of the most delectable bites you could ever imagine. <laughs> oh, man. One of the absolutely priceless parts of a meal is the ability it has to bring people together.